ready? Rolling. Yes. Well, sir. how long have you been waiting? I have not. I just started. Bradaloni's Hardware and Garden Store brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1288, April 16th, 2024. 88 degrees on this day in 1964, and 10 degrees on this day in 1875. The weather has turned a little north on us, and we probably won't be swimming uh, this weekend or anytime soon. But you know the swimming season is damn near right around the corner. Get a hold of the people at Aquaside. They've been helping people maintain Great Lake shores and swimming ponds for more than 60 years with a complete line of lake and pond control products that take care of the weeds and the algae and all that junk you don't want in there. The products are easy to use. They're made right in White Bear Lake. They work quickly, and they're registered with the EPA and DNR, so they're safe. Don't let weeds overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside today. They'll help you get the right product, and your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at one 800 328-9350 or go to aquaside.com and aquaside of course brings us the ice outs minnetonka went out on this day in 1906 1960 and 2002 white bear lake did not go out on this day hmm. uh it well it, it might have been, to- it might have been 1620 or 1790 but we just don't go back that far and i have a question uh, that needs answering because I think it's a good question. And it's from uh, Chief KB on the north bank of the Crow Wing River. Why are some, why is there White Bear Lake, Gull Lake, Pelican Lake, Rainy Lake, Red Lake, just to name a few, but there's also Lake Minnetonka, Lake Carlos, Lake Winnebagashish, Lake Vermilion. Why, why does Lake precede a name and follow a name? They're I looking wonder. for a distinction. I don't know why the, I don't hmm. know the answer to that, sir. And, and why doesn't that work for streams, brooks, rivers, ponds, swamps, and what Kenny calls cricks? Mm-hmm. Also, if a lake refreezes with the blast of spring cold, could there be two ice outs on a lake for the year? My answer to that has already been issued. No. And speaking of refreezing, why do we say refrigerator instead of refrigerator? Mm. After all, we don't call it a refreezer. Do That's we true. refrigerate and freeze food or refrigerate and refreeze it? Call me now. Let's go. That's Does a, he yeah. mention park driving on a parkway and parking, parking on, on a driveway? A driveway. Yeah. He needs a hobby. He, he's thinking too much about He that. has a hobby. He's the guy who travels the state and uh, sent us the moose story. Oh, so he's got a lot of time to think if he's traveling around. He maybe. sent a paper when this time, time that had the greatest name of any paper I've ever heard. The Middle River Honker. <laughs> What? That's a great name, the Middle uh, River Honker, uh, from Middle River, Minnesota. I that might be in Marshall County. I'm not sure. There's, that's the sound uh, for the honker. <laughs> the honker. Hey, speaking of sounders, hail the flashlight king. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. and now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic. With Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Height in the Newsroom, and of course, the Rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. In a 2022 Men Post article, when lake comes first, it's usually to emphasize a feature of the lake, like Lake Superior. Lake often comes second in the names of smaller, lesser-known features, but all of it can depend on local preference. So basically, it's whatever you want it to be. Thank you. You're welcome. I am done for the day. These not very well-educated young people who uh, are blocking freeways, uh, supposedly on behalf of Palestine, O'Hare, O'Hare, and everywhere else in the country. If if you're chanting death to America, why would you live here? It's a great point. Well, none of these kids have convictions. This is just what they're doing at the moment. But why live here? Can you imagine going to Iran and chanting death to Iran if you were an American? <laughs> you wouldn't last long. You'd be toast pretty quick. 
Or can you imagine going to Palestine and shouting death to Palestine? I don't think you'd last long, no. But these young, protected, spoiled people who are really poorly educated, they really don't know what's going on geopolitically. Why do you live here? Uh, Same with all of the uh, uh, people of the Muslim faith in the Detroit area who were shouting death to America over a Ramadan celebration. Mm -hmm. Well, then why why are you here? If America is so bad, you have to shout death to America. Well, well, the answer, of course, is they enjoy the they enjoy the materialistic benefits of of this country, and they have no desire to live elsewhere. But you shouldn't <clears throat> live here. It's hypocritical. You shouldn't live here. You should leave. I could. I don't know I'm kind of wary about bringing it up. I could dumb it down. Yeah. No hot rods. No, no sneaking out to the woods do? with the right, girlfriend right, after the football game. It's they don't have no, that, do they? No, no keg parties. No, uh, uh, yeah. And speaking their, of speaking of which, their, their parents, Joe, the upbringing. Uh, these kids are dumb. Speaking of which, I've heard from a number of email emailers. Why haven't we heard from the Minneapolis City Council on Iran? Given the city's previous declarations, writes Jim Dudley, shouldn't this weekend's attack against Israel be a top city of Minneapolis agenda item? This garage logician asks sarcastically. Hmm. Yeah, where's the Let's uh, go here. where's the, the all, showboating? All of the strikes against Israel and the Jews, starting with the Hamas attack, was all justified. Now, this is what they say, all justified by what uh, Israel has done in the past. Mm-hmm. This was all deserved and justified. Not that's not, what they say. To me, it isn't, but I no, guess of course to them not. it is. So. Right. Yeah. Now, I didn't think NPR would take action against the guy named uh, Yuri Berliner, who wrote a very interesting and very civil piece about why he thinks NPR has lost the public's trust. Uh, I did not think NPR would uh, discipline him, fire him, or what have you. They, in fact, have. They have suspended him without pay for five days. Okay. And this will lead to his firing because he is not being silent on this. Uh, you'll recall that this Yuri Berliner, who's a senior business editor for NPR, uh, publicly argued a week ago in a piece that appeared on the Barry Weiss site, the Free Press, uh, argued that his network had lost America's trust by approaching news stories with a rigidly progressive mindset or liberal mindset. Uh, So beginning last Friday, they suspended him without pay. Uh, And now the network is grappling in other ways with the fallout from his essay for the online online news site, the Free Press, it angered many of his colleagues, led NPR leaders to announce monthly internal reviews of the network's coverage, and gave fresh ammunition to conservative and partisan Republican critics of NPR, including Donald Trump, conservative conservative activist Christopher Rufo is among those now targeting NPR's new chief executive Catherine Maher. For messages she posted to social media years before joining the network. Among others, those posts include a 2020 tweet that called Trump racist and another that appeared to minimize rioting during social justice protests. Maher took the job at MP Maher took the job at NPR last month. Uh, it seems like she's a perfect fit for NPR. Can I say something about Trump? Let's go. Here we go. You know, I'm not a big fan, but let me tell you uh, something. Okay. Well, we, no, we, let me tell you. Know. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Is it going to make Trump and and his activities with a hooker are the least of New York City's problems? The absolute least. It's a dreadful 
bleep hole of a city where it's dangerous to walk down the street or get on a subway. And we have this theatrical show trial between a hooker and Trump. That's the least of their problems. Okay. Po- point of order, Your yeah. Honor. Uh, a per- permission to. I was done. Judge. I was going to move on, but <laughs> not to. I mean, we're fact based, right? On the show. Uh, yeah. She's not a hooker. She's technically a porn star. Oh, whatever. They call them sex workers these yeah. days, Joe. Yeah. But that's the least of that city's problems. But that he's not charged with having sex with it. That's not what the charges are. The charges have to do with the money that she was paid. The hush money. And, and yeah. the there's hush a money. Kind of, there's a kind and, of hush money. And the fact that it came from campaign money that it wasn't supposed to. But but Joe's point is and, still. That's st- my point still stands. And the it's fact the that the least of that city's problems. And the fact that he did it so that the news wouldn't get out before the 2016 election. Right. That's what but, the charges okay, are about. But John, all right, now you're forcing me to go down this road. But take Joe's point into context, though. If you're if you, John Height, are yes. a taxpayer in New York City, is this on the top ten yeah. of things that you're concerned with right now? It might be only because have you ever met anybody from New York City? They don't like Donald Trump. So they might be fine with it. I have no idea. I have no clue. You didn't answer his question. Okay. uh, The question is, does this rank among New York's most urgent problems? Does, I guess I would expand that to say, does, (laughs) Kenny's bored by this, does his presidency, et cetera, you know, does that matter in the in the context of the last eight years? And it all started in 2016 with the you know the whole spiel. Spiel. So is that a yes or is that a no? That's a no, I think. Right? Isn't it? Okay. Uh, for me, it would be the least of the problems. I'm, I'm aware of the impact it might have because of him being having been a president. But I, uh, in the current day, in the current temperature of new york city uh i would have put this uh, i would have delayed this somehow i would have gotten to this i would have gotten to this no, he, he tried but, he yeah. tried to well, delay it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah but i'm saying the city might have and but there's see this is the problem there's no winning arguments like this. well but okay i found a thread a couple of days ago and it basically sums up what you just said joe um, I don't know this reporter's name. I've never heard of him before, but this is an amazing thread that he posted on social media. What's his name? Uh, Shai Davidi. Never heard of him. No. Uh, he he's he's Jewish. He is uh, he works for an outlet called Columbia Biz. Anyway, I've never shared many or I've shared many disturbing videos over the past six months, but I've never seen anything like this. These were the sites today in New York City. Not in Rafa, not in Kabul. In New York City, this is domestic terrorism. Talking about the protesters waving the green and yellow uh, flag from Hezbollah and and the Hamas protesters and things like that. Sure. That's, I think, more of, of what you're talking about, Such, right? Mm-hmm. That and the illegal immigration, the violence, uh, subway violence. Uh, it's just a bad scene in New York. Uh, but it, I was willing to just say that and be done with it. But I, I since uh, Kenny's dragging it out, <laughs> but the death to America stuff and the Ken, and the people Ken wearing the leave. Hamas garb th- that this isn't film that's across. This is in our own backyard right yeah, now. And I want to know why you live here then. Yeah, if you hate it here yeah. so much, go away. You know what it is with me. So I, what is I don't it with want. You, please, I don't want us. Us five. To fight about this, because all we're doing is mirror, mirroring, or, or arguing, nation. or whatever, even discussing it, mirroring what the, the nonsense that's going on in in the country right now, but which I, is just exhausting. I to will me. only disagree with you to a certain extent, Kenny. I think we're one of the few shows that can have a civil discussion about this. Yeah, it, it makes me uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> Anxiety it gives me anxiety. Well, it gives me anxiety too, Kitty. But you know, what are you going to do? Well, this I harken back life, to the days. Life has an anxiety, Kitty. Uh, harken back to the days where I just showed up and made quips. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like eh, what's <laughs> no, the emotion, no investment whatsoever. I don't well, know who said then, it, but do you, do you know what anxiety is? It's uh, a conspiracy against yourself. 
Yeah, it sure is. It's not bad. Yeah, it yeah. sure is. Yeah, That's Kenny, what it is. Yeah. Kenny, yeah, to try I to agree. echo what you said, I like uh, I'd like to harken back to the days when I would sit out in the other room and just show up and do news <laughs> once an hour. Yeah, and then you hey, drop it at Adam. Crosstones backed and stacked. Hey. Right. <laughs> and I wouldn't have to, you know. But on this particular thread, this one interesting point, gentlemen, is the fact that a lot of this is being shouted very near the site of the World Trade Centers. That's, yeah. I guess, it's the symbolism that got me the most. Yuri Berliner, where I was <laughs> when I allowed myself to sidetrack myself. Like like a dog that sees a cat. <laughs> right. Yuri Berliner is proving that uh, the, the progressives are very accommodating so long as you believe in them. They can't take any criticism. He's got people saying, I feel betrayed. Well, go bleep yourself. Right. This guy gets to have his opinion. Oh, I feel hurt. We trusted each other. We had collegiality. No, you have a very one-sided outfit here, and this guy had the chutzpah to point it out. And now did you, he's, huh? Did you see their official? Well, never mind. I won't talk. I'm shutting off my mic. No, no, you're right. Their, their official um, um, response was yesterday, right, John? I think I read it yesterday. Is this a disclosure part of the story? No, don't play that game, John. I don't have time for it. Is this a okay, disclosure well, then don't part act of the like, you know, a child. Okay. It's just that I'm not. I'm talking Jesus. about this story. Well, like, as soon as I say something, you know. Is, what, okay, what, what are you referring to? The, their official reason, which I thought was pretty ridiculous, why they suspended them. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I, I help me. I, I guess I have. Their official seen, reason um, was apparently you can't do work for anybody else if you work for NPR. And since he wrote this piece for another company, that was their quote official reason. Oh, so when I read that, I, I thought, it. I thought, now what if he had done the same thing with a different topic? You know exactly. what I mean? If, yep. if they didn't, exactly. you never would have heard of Peep. Yep. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. Be well, that's speculation, but that's what I was. Thinking. No, if he had oh, done yeah. a piece on bird watching, you no. never would have heard a peep. Never, yeah. never be suspended. So, I, I just love the story because I'm a news geek. Do you, could this happen at any other news outlet in the United States? Uh, I bet it could happen at the New York Times. Didn't Barry leave yeah. the New York Times? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about across town? Would it happen here? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, what? Oh, yeah, Chris. Yeah, what if what if somebody at the Star Tribune printed something like this in an opposing paper or Alpha News, say, or anywhere? What well, was you, raise it, you raise an interesting point, and the point would be he would not have been allowed to have this appear on an NPR site. They would have just dismissed it offhand. They would right. have said no. Right. So a Star Tribune columnist or reporter or business editor could uh, write a critique of the newspaper, and it's very unlikely, it's more than unlikely, it would not appear in the Star Tribune. Now, if he went and peddled it to Alpha News, I uh, I don't know what the Star Tribune's reaction would be. Hmm. I don't know. Well, the problem is if the Star Tribune person attempted to come to the Pioneer Press, they wouldn't be able to find the building. There is no building. Right. right. <laughs> You're done. What did Fox fire Tucker Carlson for? Was it officially? Was it, there a oh, officially. It was different from what um, it was. Uh... I, I can't God, find this? a story that says, but I'm just curious if if they use the excuse that he didn't fit in because he, his ratings were good. Yeah, I, I I can't remember what the reason was. He wasn't at the end of his contract, was he? No. And they just no. didn't re-up him? Nope. All right. I don't remember. Mm. He claims it was, uh, Tucker says it was because of the Dominion thing. That cost him so much money, the 788. Yeah, because there was a lawsuit, correct, Johnny? Well, that's now they, probably they, the reason. They, it probably did cost him a lot of money. That was it, the reason. Seven, yeah, $788 million they had to pay Dominion. But see, in theory, anything early Berliner, Yuri Berliner says about NPR won't cost NPR any money. Yeah. You know, ostensibly, they don't make money, wink, wink. They're fed no, so by much. the taxpayers. Right. <laughs> Oddly enough, I have the Tucker story on NPR. Um, Tucker Carlson yeah. ousted at Fox News following network's $787 million settlement. 
Yeah, but I don't think no. they use that as a reason, though. They, that's not what Fox used as the reason. Oh, okay. Well, that's what this had, that's what this story just, I guess, claimed. But I think what uh, Yuri might end up doing is just looking for another is look for another gig. There's a lot out there. Because if he's any good at what he does, being a business editor, there's a there's a crying need for business editors. Yeah, and he wouldn't have to stay there if he doesn't uh, want to stay there. But if he based if on his oh, I'm sorry. If his colleagues feel so put upon, but based on his ousting, wouldn't it be a non compete? He's not situation? ousted. Well, I'm sorry. Suspension. Uh, would there be also a non compete involved? Uh, so, I don't know that. I don't know if I, I, that could very well be. I don't know. Did you read the NPR version of this story? The I, MPR? No, NPR. Yeah, that's the one I, I have in front of me. Yeah, the one I linked to you. Did yeah. you see the disclosure yeah. at the end? Yeah. We this got story, to do this without telling our bosses. <laughs> this story was reported and written by NPR media correspondent David Fulkenflick well, and edited by deputy business editor and managing editor under NPR's protocol for reporting on itself. No NPR corporate official or news executive reviewed this story before it was posted publicly. I love that disclaimer. Yeah. I don't know what I, is that supposed to make me feel good about something? No. I, I, I guy, don't know what that's supposed the guy, to do. The, the guy that wrote the piece for NPR was actually a buddy and co-worker yeah. 